and welcome to the Oddity Archive, the show that attempts to do it all, but does justice to nothing. Anyway, it's the start of a new season here in Archive Land, and as longtime viewers know, that can only mean one thing. You're going to have to sit there and listen to me blab on and on and on about how I spent my summer, out of character no less. So uh, anyway, as you may or may not know, every year, be it intentionally or otherwise, I always seem to find myself trying to learn something new or fix up another piece of old gear or something, and... This year it wound up being just kind of a mishmash. I mean, I did some repairs on another piece of old gear, but I also took a look at a new idea, and I also took a new stab at an old idea. So what that means for this episode is that it's going to be a three-pronged episode. Over the between-season break, I acquired and sort of fixed up a spare Super Betamax unit, and I also took a very basic peek into the world of software-defined radio, and I also uh, took another stab at Part 15 microbroadcasting, something I first attempted last year. So anyway, we got a lot to discuss here, so let's just dive right in. Because old Benny Boy just needed another old electronic in his life, I got this. I just never seem to learn, and, and they always seem to be fixer-uppers. So what we've got here is my second Super Betamax unit, and this is a lower-end model than the one I already have. This is an SLHF 400, which I believe was the basic and introductory unit of the Super Beta Hi-Fi series, which came out in 1985, I believe. And I don't know if that's when this specific unit dates to, but I'd be willing to bet it's probably 85 or 86. And so, um, as is want to happen with me, everything about this was just a complete dirty, messy nightmare. So uh, this would actually be a good time for me to cut to a picture that I took when I was cleaning this. Now imagine that on most of a roll of paper towels, about 40 Q-tips, about half a bottle of Windex, and a good chunk of a bottle of high-grade isopropyl alcohol. And you will know how filthy this thing was. And uh, I had to clean out the inside, too. But uh, surprisingly, the basic gears, deep down in there in that kind of window, uh, were pretty good. Now, having said that, this seems to be one of those units that... Uh, it works better the more you use it. The first time I tried to play anything on it, it was pretty glitchy. The first time I tried to record anything on it, it was real glitchy. But I cleaned, like, the Ace Assembly again and just kept taking another stab at it and another stab at it, and it just got a little better every time. And it's gotten to a point where it's actually pretty solid now. But having said that, man, this thing's got a real personality. So, for starters, the rewind and fast forward, it seems to be, uh, how do you want to put this, a two-part circuit. So, if you want to rewind something in shuttle mode, it actually starts fast forwarding just super, super briefly, just a half a second, then it kicks into rewind. So, it's like it has to go through that part of it first. But sometimes it doesn't always catch where it, when it's supposed to let the other part of that whole thing kick in. So you'll hit the rewind button and sometimes it'll just fast forward and just keep fast forwarding. But I, uh, I haven't worked that out yet. And of course, I'm not a big fan of this type of button, these really shallow buttons. Just in my experience, they don't seem to hold up very well because people, I think, tended to just really whack at them and it, it's kind of... It's not very nice. I, I still prefer the more robust buttons on something like a VCR because people, I think, were less inclined to just pound on it or just mash their hands on it, hoping for something to happen that they want to happen that I'm sure the machine knows. 
that. So anyway, this is uh, kind of the standard fare for this period of electronics. A lot of stuff is still pretty well manual, so like the tracking is still a wheel, and it's in the fixed position right now. I don't know if it's uh, going to pick that up. But, uh, and that's another thing I've noticed, just over the years dealing with beta stuff from other people that they recorded off air or made dubs of stuff, it's like they'd get a tape with bad tracking and they'd forget to set it back to the fixed position, the center fixed position, and so invariably when I get a batch of beta tapes, it's like the, it'll be all the way hard left on uh, the tracking position. And it's got a little stopper on there. There it is. I know you can't see it, but you can, if you were to use this, you could feel it stop. And uh, let's just go through some of the parts here. So uh, input select, as you would expect, tuner from the coax, uh, line in for RCA. And then you could, I guess this would be about as close to a real toy as this has, but you could do PCM, straight up audio type stuff. If, for like how sometimes albums would get backed up to umatic so uh, you could apply that same principle here uh or you could just make a really long really cool mixtape i suppose and uh over here more switches and knobs again the fixed position seems to be something that a lot of people would just forget about but i i personally try and keep it where it should be, especially if I'm recording something, so hopefully it'll work the best on the most units. And then over here, more stuff you'd expect, like a stereo left and right channel audio monitor. Uh, you can switch between hi-fi audio and normal. And uh, the clock, my 840 is kind of the same way. You have to just kind of get used to hitting clock and then having to go through each individual thing and hit next and go through the whole list of date, hour, minute sort of thing. And setting the timer is very much the same way. It's almost explicitly the same way. So uh, you can hit... Uh, timer set and then go through and then make sure you hit the red button to engage the timer because otherwise this damn thing won't record. Now one thing this has that my other Super Beta does not have is this little area for tuner and honestly it's uh, it hasn't been much use to me but it seems to work kinda sorta okay. It, it, Again, the buttons seem to get confused with each other again, but at least mechanically, as far as playback goes, this thing is pretty solid. And then, uh, of course, uh, manual auto recording level, which I kind of wish stuff like that would have now, or at least as late as the late VCRs, uh, just for the stations with either really weak signals or just really overdone signals. And then, of course, like a... Uh, the beta hi-fi light and all that good stuff. And uh, I haven't had any real luck with uh, SAP. So was that second audio programming? What they used to use, I think, for like Spanish language stuff, having uh, two audio tracks on the same channel. But I don't think that's really much of a thing anymore. It seems like there's separate channels for it now, but uh, who knows? I, I haven't had any luck with that. Anyway, here it is. I thought you'd like to see it. And I actually got a batch of beta tapes over the summer, too. And I did some transfer work with this thing. So I'll, uh, I guess I'll have to use one of those or maybe just something else. I haven't decided yet. Just so you get an idea of what this looks like. And uh, it's actually pretty good. It, it looks especially nice if it's something I recorded in super beta mode. I couldn't stand any longer. I was running away. From Big Ed? Yeah. What's the matter? Don't you like him? No, no. Maybe you shouldn't have teamed up with him in the first place, huh? I couldn't help it, Cody. He said if I didn't go away with him, he'd have you killed. <laughs> All I wanted was for you to come back. That's the truth. I love you, Cody. I love you. <laughs> This is KCET Los Angeles, subscriber-supported television for Southern and Central California, ending another broadcast day.
our programming reflects a rich variety of local interests and features outstanding cultural, educational, and public affairs programs from PBS, the Public Broadcasting Service. As you probably already know, last year I got my ham radio license, and when I went to order my first handheld transceiver, I also ordered this little USB dongle that could be used for something called Software Defined Radio, or SDR. And what that is, is it's basically just a cheaper, more convenient method uh, for people to scan the skies to look for broadcasts. And it's especially handy for people that just want to listen and not broadcast and, you know, not have to deal with getting a license and stuff. But uh, this is actually really the bottom of the barrel basic stuff. People have whole rigs of this stuff, but this is just a little USB dongle and a little antenna that came with it. And so I actually filmed this a while back, but I still figured maybe you'd want to see just what you can accomplish on 12 bucks, which as you would expect really isn't all that much. When I was getting into the whole ham radio thing last year, I of course went looking for a cheap starter radio and, uh, I found one, and uh, you've seen it on Archive before if you follow this show enough. But uh, I knew I was going to get free shipping on it, so I just went looking for any other little toys just to dink around with. And I found this thing for another, I think, $12. And this is, uh, well, let me just say, I totally forgot about this. When I got the radio, I just started playing with that, and I totally forgot about this and have only recently started playing with it. But what we've got here is a little USB stick, and uh, as the box says, terrestrial receiver. And this thing was actually really meant for TV signals, but only over in Europe. It's pretty well useless over here. But it can be used for software-defined radio, and that's why I picked it up, because I had no experience with it, and it just seemed like something I could play with. So I got it. And what we've got is a USB stick and a cheap crappy little antenna and a wire that plugs into the USB. And you can use software with it. And this thing can pick up a pretty wide band of radio frequencies, starting at a little below the CB territory, so a little below 11 meters, 12 meters, I guess you could say. And I think you can go up just shy of one gigahertz. So you can go through a lot of area with this, but with the antenna and how short it is, it's pretty much only really good for the really, really high frequencies. But anyway, let's take a cut here. We'll take a look at what's in the box and we'll take a look at my very, very uninspiring setup. And uh, yes, I realize I am far from the first person to discuss this, but you know, the whole how I spent my summer thing. And here are the complete contents of the box. We've got a remote control that I've never used because it's more for the TV end of things anyway, so kind of useless. I mean, uh, if I'm doing software to find radio, I have to sit there at the computer and type in everything anyway because, you know, third-party software and all. And then there's also a 3-inch CD that I've never used because I would imagine it's for the TV stuff. Uh, it seemed kind of useless. I, I knew what I was going to do with this anyway. And then uh, we've got the flash drive of sorts. And it's got what I believe is a really, really small SMA a, a connector. Uh, I'm sure the choir pedantics will tell me if I'm wrong. And then, of course, we got the antenna base and the antenna itself. Now, this antenna is so short that it's pretty much only good for the upper frequencies. I think I've mentioned this already. But I've seen videos of people on YouTube jerry-rigging their own antennas for this specific thing. And I've seen people make antennas out of slinkies for the lower frequencies. So I, I guess you could play around with it. I haven't done that, so I can't really comment. But 
uh, it's something to think about if you do get one of these things. But as it stands, there's our whole antenna set up. And indeed, our entire rig. Keep up to 95% commission. That's right, 95%. Better yet, we'll start you off with a $500 bonus. That's right, $500 for each new Lyft driver in Denver. And you'll only earn more from there. Whether you're putting money toward a mortgage, saving for vacation, or just looking for a better way to earn, choose Lyft. Getting more for your money is simpler than you might think. When you shop at King Supers, you get low prices throughout the store. Weekly specials. Great value from our quality brand. This is K2LAK doing a little test with the software defined radio. Wish I had something smarter to say. K2LAK out. Plug your ears. I devoted the first episode of last season to a couple of stabs at Part 15 broadcasting. Uh, read legal, unlicensed, amateur radio and TV broadcasting. And uh, despite my attempts at keeping everything legal, it nonetheless still managed to rile up a couple of viewers, one of which actually went as far as to flag the video over it, over a sub-one-minute TV transmission of a signal so weak that it couldn't make it out of the confines of this room, and a radio test of a plain sine wave that only made it a few hundred feet. Whatever. Uh, anyway, sour grapes aside, perhaps against my better judgment, I decided to take another stab at this whole Part 15 thing, because, you know, I learned so well. But this time I wanted to do it 100% unquestionably, absolutely, legally. And so I went on eBay and I got me one of them real estate talking house transmitter things. Spoiler alert, this doesn't work. But in spite of that, let's take a quick look at it anyway. This is the Talking House transmitter, and for a long time these things were used just for real estate agents to, you know, play a broadcast loop of information about a house that they're trying to sell. More recently, sometime, I think starting around 2009-2010, this became more targeted at hobbyists. And uh, I always found this strange. I always thought the commercial AM frequency band was 530 to 1710. Every radio I've ever owned has been that, but I guess it's 520 to 1700. Or maybe it's not. Anyway, uh, this came a little chewed up. I wasn't too happy about that, but I was even less happy about this as I said, not working. And this is indeed the current model of this thing. So this isn't one of those old things that I tend to play with. This really is the current, as of this episode, uh, 5.0 transmitter. And of course, this is, as far as I know, the only real legal Part 15 real transmitter. You know, not something that just plays an iPod in your car or something. And so, uh, in spite of this not working, as I said, let's just take a quick look at it. I haven't taken the plastic off, and I don't intend to, because uh, I'm going to try and return this thing, but I thought you'd like to see it anyway. Uh, the center two buttons, you can choose what frequency you broadcast on. 
and on either side of that you've got the record and play buttons for the built-in uh, little mini hard drive on here that can play a pre-recorded message of up to, I believe, a grand total of five minutes. It says five on the box, but there's two parts, so I would assume that's two and a half minutes a piece. Uh, I haven't tried that. It seemed a little pointless with this not doing what's supposed to, but uh, anyway, uh, let me just note that these things, I believe, become illegal if you use... Um, if you mod this in any way or use a longer antenna or that sort of thing. So it's only legal if you're using stock stuff of which this is all stock stuff. This is the antenna that came with it. It's bundled up right now, but it's a 10 footer. And uh, we got a little key that when taken out, keeps you from making any changes to the box. Uh, you can choose between the built in per se antenna and an outdoor one that's available sold separately that I don't have. Uh, Two-part message select for that uh, built-in message thing. Uh, I've only put in a CD player, a uh, Discman specifically, into the line input thus far. And it doesn't make any difference. Haven't tried the mic uh, externally or the internal one in here. Uh, transmit mode, you can do the loop or live. There's a built-in speaker. And that's about it. So I'm going to get this thing hooked up. And I'm only going to show you a couple of attempts at this because it's the same every single time. So I'll go into a little more detail on that verbally. But as for the demos that you will see, I'm only going to show you one or two. So let's take a cut here. Now, before we begin, let me give my usual boatload of caveats. Uh, I have tried this thing in every permutation that I can think of within the realm of what I have, uh, what is stock on this thing. So I have tried this plugged into the wall. I've tried it plugged into a power strip surge protector. I have tried it in multiple rooms. I've tried it uh, in every place I can think of. I have tried the antenna just in a coil on the floor as per one of the suggestions in the manual. I've tried to run it along the wall. I've in I've done it straight up and that's how I'm doing it now just for convenience sake. So just up to the ceiling. And uh, none of it works. So what you're going to see here are two demos. I'm going to do this with the default frequency that this comes up with, which is 1670, which is kind of weird because I thought it was supposed to be 1610. I mean, that's what you usually see on the signs, and that's what's supposed to be usually uh, information and stuff, but uh, I'm not going to harp on that because I'm not positive. Uh, and then I'm going to try on the low end of the AM commercial AM spectrum. Now, to plug this thing in, you're supposed to start by having it already plugged into the wall, which I do, and then you plug this into the back of the machine. So, uh, And what you're going to be looking at is this device right here with the two cylinders, and it's going to go out and back in and out and back in a bunch of times. And in the end, uh, the screen on the front is just going to give an error message. So, uh, yeah, you have something to look forward to. And this takes a while, so I might have to do a little uh, fancy creative editing here. But uh, let's get this thing plugged in. It'll start itself right up, if I can get the camera to focus. There it goes. So there we are. It's calibrating... And we get to stare at this for a long time. And uh, let me also note real quick here that the gears underneath that I can't really quite get to with the camera are... Uh, I checked to make sure they weren't dried out or anything, and they were lubed at the factory. I gave them a little extra just in case this thing wasn't doing, you know, all the way the full range of in and out, and uh, it's made no difference. But anyway, uh, just sit back and yawn. Imagine that. All right, let's give it one more go. Let's unplug it and start over. And we'll set 
this guy. And uh, 580 is where I'm heading. That's the most isolated spot we've got on the low end of the AM band around these parts. And there uh, was no 1670 either. In fact, 1670 is actually a very good place around here uh, as for the other test. But anyway, here we go, round two. Imagine that. Anyway, uh, in case I didn't mention it, this is for the fine-tuning for the specific spot on the AM band, hence why it's going out and in. And uh, the thing is that it, this thing is just deaf. It just can't seem to latch onto it. And I'm sure I could probably play around with this a little more. There might be something that's not resonant, I guess would be a good way to put it, um, that's supposed to uh, work with some sort of a basic frequency. That's, I imagine, how something like this would work. But I'm not going to, because, call me entitled, but when I buy something new, I kind of expect to not have to fix it up. Uh, hence the whole concept of new. So I'm not going to do any further testing on this thing. Uh, and as it stands right now, I'm going to try and return this and if all else fails, uh, you could very well be looking at the first and hopefully only installment of Archive Demolishes, because uh, I'm not dealing with a, an $80 doorstop. Anyway, got that off my chest, so uh, yeah, that's it for today's archive. I'm not even going back to, back to the box here. Uh, that's it for today's archive. Join us next time when we finally properly kick off the season and I start being more my silly, goofy self again. <laughs>